on February 17th of 2017, I was going to be doing a talk at a club down in Washington. And in mid-afternoon, my speech was already written, and in mid-afternoon, I got a call from a friend of mine who works at the White House. I have one or two <laughs> who work at the White House. And what he told me was that um, you're going to be talking about the press tonight. I said, yes. He said, you better be aware of something that the president is going to be saying. I said, what is that? He said, well, the president is going to call the American press the enemy of the American people. And I laughed, literally, thinking that there goes my friend. He's joking <coughs> once again. He said, I'm not kidding. That is exactly what he said, and I'll read it to you. And he read this paragraph, including that phrase. And I have to confess to you that I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned. And um, over the period of the next couple of months, I began to think about why it had that impact on me. And the first thing that came to mind was a story that I covered many, many years before in Moscow in February of 1956. At that time, Nikita Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union, was delivering a very major speech before the 20th Party Congress in Moscow, and that was called the Secret Speech, and in it, he attacked Joseph Stalin. And he attacked Stalin for having fathered a form of communism that Khrushchev, another good communist, found abhorrent. And he gave a number, Khrushchev did, a number of illustrations of the way in which Stalin had perverted communism by carrying it way beyond what Marx might have had in mind. One of the things he pointed to was the use of a phrase, enemy of the people. And Khrushchev said that that is unacceptable because you could name any good communist an enemy of the people, and then you would have the theoretical backing to get rid of that enemy. And Khrushchev didn't like it. And I was thinking to myself, here was Khrushchev arguing with another communist about the use of the phrase enemy of the people and finding that in communist lexicon, that was too much and you can't go down that path. And here was a president duly elected in a democracy using that phrase and then obviously you begin to think about what is on his mind and what is the origin of the phrase. I believe firmly that President Trump has no idea what the historical <laughs> origin of the phrase I know you the people is. None. He does not read history books. He does not read books. And he has stated so, by the way. I don't say that pejoratively, but factually. He has stated that he doesn't read books, that every now and then he will read a chapter of a book that is brought to his attention as something you've got to read. I'm not even sure of that. But putting that aside for a sec, he's not a reader. So where did the phrase get into his head and how? And so um, I did a, a number of calls here and there. And the most interesting story emerged. Um, some of you in this room, as I look around, you're old enough to remember Pat Cadell. Pat Cadell was a pollster. Uh, Pat worked for Jimmy Carter. And in 1975-6, he was the one, not totally, but significantly responsible for the fact that Jimmy Carter, a virtually unknown governor of Georgia, was going to be the president of the United States. And Pat had a very good feel for the American people, and he translated that feel into <laughs> phrases that Carter was to use very successfully to advance his case. At that time, Pat Cadell was very much a man of the left. He is now very much a man of the right. And starting at about 2010, he began to do articles. He had, he had his effort to be published in a number of the major American <coughs> news organizations failed. And he began to look around for other places. And one of the places he found was Breitbart. Breitbart was an old right, still is, a website which runs articles uh, that perhaps most of you would not choose to read, uh, likewise with me, 
But nevertheless, I was told that if you want to find out about where Pat is today, you've got to go to Breitbart. So I went to Breitbart, looked up the Pat Cadell contribution, and what was very interesting in this connection of the research for this book was Pat got into his head that the American press corps, there's some truth to this, the American press corps had become so elitist and the big shots in American journalism had become uh, themselves removed from where the average American citizen was. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, and I don't really believe it, but put that aside. That was very much in Pat's mind. And he is the one who came up with the phrase, enemy of the people, and that the American press, by becoming too elitist, too removed from the average citizen, had become um, a force that operated counter to the interests of the American people. And therefore, they were the enemies of the American people. Pat knows because he's a very smart man. Um, at least he was. Uh, Pat knows that the expression has two derivations, one political and one literary. Uh, the political one goes right back to the Roman Empire. When Nero um, uh, vanished on vacation into Greece uh, while Rome burned and then he was brought back by the Senate and accused of being an enemy of the people and killed. And that idea of an established political organization getting to a political figure who had gone astray, bringing him back, accusing him of being the enemy of the people, everybody that the existing government represented, um, that guy could then be accused of being the enemy and therefore the juridical, political foundation for killing him was established. And that was, went through the French Revolution, uh, went through all of the minor revolutions and middle level revolutions of the 19th century. And when it got into the 20th century, it was very much a feature of the far left or the far right. Hitler used it um, broadly. Hitler used it in a way as to encompass just about, encompass just about everybody. Mussolini used it in a rather elitist way. Mussolini used it to go after specifically certain people who had objected to his rise to power. They were the enemies, kill him. Uh, Hitler, more broadly, Stalin used it, as I was saying before with Khrushchev, very widely, um, and according to Khrushchev, wrongly. Mao Zedong used it, but in a communist sense that the enemy of the people were the landlords. But in every way, it was a phrase where you could designate part of society as being out of line with what it is that you, as the existing authority in society, determined was the right way to do things. Anybody who was a dissident, uh, off to one side and killed. Who are the people, therefore, who by their very nature in the 21st century are the obvious enemies of the people, namely the press? Because we are in the middle of everything. We are the people who are seen uh, when there is um, a terrible tragedy in California, it is the press today that is reporting that 11 people were murdered. Uh, that's the press's job. But at the same time, it comes through, or it could come through if you wish it that way, as a negative force. I don't believe any of this is in Trump's mind. He is using the phrase because it just sounds right. When he was reading this on Breitbart and hearing it on the Breitbart radio, and it was pushed to him by the man who then ran Breitbart, namely Steve Bannon. And Bannon loves the phrase, uses it all the time. And he picked that up from Pat. That was then brought into the White House, uh, presented to Trump, loved it immediately. And he met Pat Cadell. And Pat then said to him something that as we all get to know the president, 
uh, appealed to the president enormously. Pat, very smart, psychologically very smart, went to the president and said, that expression of yours, Mr. President, making America great again, is the greatest political expression in the history of American politics. Ah, Trump said, I thought of that.